Point Nemo is known as the most remote and lifeless oceanic spot on the planet. The nearest coast is 1,670 miles or 2,688 kilometers away. Very few people have ever crossed this point. Even the engineer, Hervoya Lacatella, who located it with the help of a computer program in 1992, has never actually been there. Also, according to the writings of Howard Lovecraft, a monster named Cthulhu lives near Point Nemo. This is, of course, science fiction, but research in the 1990s made scientists think that some unusual creatures that can survive even the most extreme conditions of our planet might actually exist in this inaccessible part of the ocean. But what actually lives in the deadliest and most remote zone of the oceans? And why are there so many extraterrestrial objects there? In 1997, scientists received the first warning alarm from Point Nemo. Researchers had placed underwater microphones 2,000 miles or 3,219 kilometers apart to study the volcanic activity of the South Pacific. But these sensors recorded sound that was not what scientists expected to hear. It was the loudest sound ever heard from the depths of the ocean. It sounded like this. Scientists gave the name the bloop to the mysterious sound. However, its origin at that time remained unknown. Specialists from the Pacific Marine Environmental Laboratory of the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration began working to solve this mystery. At first, scientists thought that the bloop was caused by some kind of huge ship or other massive vessel. But as it turns out, not a single ship was located near Point Nemo on that day. Moreover, in a remote region like Port Nemo, there was almost never any ships, so this explanation was ruled out almost immediately. The second option is that the sound came from a whale or a giant squid. However, the sound was so powerful that not a single living creature on planet Earth can make it. Given the fact that 95% of the world's oceans have not been explored, scientists have put forward a completely unbelievable hypothesis. An unknown creature lives in the waters of Point Nemo, one whose size exceeds even that of a blue whale, the largest animal discovered to date. Such an assumption is even more unrealistic because the conditions at Point Nemo are unsuitable for life. The fact is that this place is located above the fault line of two tectonic plates, which is consistently expanding. Magma rises between the plates, creating hydrothermal valves that expel hot water and minerals. In such an extreme environment, the existence of life is impossible. At least, that is what scientists thought until recently. That is so long that they had no proof to the contrary. A group of German scientists from the Max Planck Institute for Marine Microbiology on board the RV Son conducted a study at Point Nemo to find out if there is life there. It turned out that about 20 species of bacteria live in the upper layer of the ocean at a depth of up to 500 meters. This is, of course, the smallest number of existing species in one place on the planet, but it's still better than nothing. In addition, these bacteria attract other larger species. For example, the hairy yeti crab, discovered in 2005, has begun to come into the waters of Point Nemo. However, no large creature emitting a strange, loud sound was ever found. The mysterious animal, according to scientists, should be at least 250 feet, 76.2 meters long, which is more than twice the length of a blue whale. But scientists from around the world have not given up and continued to search, regularly exploring the sounds coming from the bottom of the ocean. At the same time, ordinary people from all over the world put forward their guesses as to the source of the bloop. Some fans of Howard Lovecraft believe that Cthulhu really exists, while others have attributed the mysterious creature to an extraterrestrial origin. The speculation would still continue to this day if scientists had not put an end to the mysterious story. According to Robert Jack, a seismologist at Oregon National University, the bloop is a result of a crack in the glaciers of Antarctica. Every time an iceberg breaks away, loud sound waves extend thousands of miles across the nearby oceans. So the idea of underwater monsters from another planet will have to be forgotten. 
However, extraterrestrial objects do exist in these almost lifeless waters. At least these objects definitely traveled from beyond the borders of our planet. The fact is that the area around Point Nemo has long been known to those involved with space exploration. Used artificial satellites and spacecraft are dumped precisely in this dead part of the ocean. As a result, Point Nemo has become a spacecraft graveyard. The decision to turn this uninhabited zone of the ocean into a space dump was made for good reason. After all, Point Nemo is the most remote region away from where any people live. The nearest settlement is located about 248 miles away or 400 kilometers. That is on the International Space Station. In addition, a very limited number of animal species live here. Therefore, dumping of used equipment at Point Nemo causes the least environmental harm. The first spacecraft was landed at Point Nemo in 1971. Since then, 250 to 300 spacecrafts have accumulated in this zone. The largest object to be condemned to the spacecraft cemetery was recorded on March 23, 2001. After 15 years of operation, the Mir space station, weighing 143 tons, was brought down over this point in the ocean. During its fall, at an altitude of about 62 miles or 100 kilometers, and while entering the Earth's dense atmosphere, the station began to crumble. By the time of the impact into the water, its mass was no more than 25 tons. All the missing parts either burned up or were torn off and scattered over a radius of tens to hundreds of kilometers. Judging by the information I found on the internet, the wreckage of Space Station Mir scattered an area of more than 932 miles or 1,500 kilometers long and 62 miles or 100 kilometers wide. As you have probably figured out, the Space Station Cemetery is nothing close to a plot of land with level ground neat burials, and a security gun at the entrance. Flooded space objects and their parts can be found scattered for many kilometers across the ocean. But still, this is better than if the debris fell onto inhabited areas of our planet. But Point Nemo is so far from land that the nearest people are on the International Space Station. The paradox is that the space station rotates at an altitude of 258 miles, or 416 kilometers, from the surface of the planet while the nearest terrestrial populations lie thousands of miles from Point Nemo. It turns out that the astronauts periodically flying over Point Nemo are the closest people nearby. But that will change soon. The most interesting event associated with Point Nemo is waiting for us in the near future. Presumably, in about five to nine years, the most expensive project in the history of mankind, the International Space Station, will fall in the most remote region of the ocean. Assuming, of course, everything goes according to plan and the operational life of the space station is not extended. The mass of the ISS is about 420 tons, which is 20 times more than the mass of all meteorites that have entered the Earth's atmosphere during the course of a year, and about six times more than the mass of the GOBA, the largest of all known meteorites. Therefore, if the ISS does not shatter into fragments in flight, the spectacle should be unforgettable and the most inaccessible region of the oceans will claim a very valuable specimen. Despite the abundance of space debris, Point Nemo, according to all assumptions, should be the cleanest corner of the world's oceans, because for thousands of miles you will not find a single person, and there are practically no sea vessels there. But the round-the-world race of yachts in 2018 showed the opposite. The crew of one of the yachts took water from Point Nemo for testing. As it turned out, there are 27 pieces of microplastic per cubic meter of water. Therefore, even inaccessible places in the oceans are heavily polluted. What does this tell us about parts of the ocean where people regularly leave their mark? In fact, the most polluted areas of the oceans can contain up to 100,000 microplastic particles per cubic meter. Migrating all over the planet, they reach even the most inaccessible regions like Point Nemo. In 2010, the group Gorillaz released their album Plastic Beach which very beautifully touched on this very important topic for humanity. They created a fictional story. Allegedly, the music was recorded in a recording studio built with marine debris from Point Nemo. This is a very serious problem. Once again, we should think about our attitude towards environmental pollution before it's too late. Indeed, according to the latest data, life in the Pacific Ocean is already under serious threat of extinction. It can be destroyed by gigantic, um, it seems this is a topic for another issue.
Write your ideas and guesses on this subject in the comments. Put a thumbs up if you want to continue this topic and subscribe to my channel if you have not done so already. Thank you for your attention and see you soon my friends.